Hi, Andy Carter here, PJ PGA Teaching Professional here at Jamira Golf Estates and welcome down to Carter's Golf. Thank you very much for joining me. If you've seen yesterday's tip on chipping the three do's and don'ts, today we've got pitching for you. Okay, so pitching is a huge, hugely important part of the game. I think if you're a, if you're a golfer off maybe a 13 handicap and above, you're going to be pitching on pretty much every single hole you play. The, the ones that's particularly the ones that you don't make in regulation or if you don't hit the ball too far off the tee, you're always going to be pitching in for your third shot in particular on a par four. So a pit, pitching is a, certainly a part of the game that can lower your handicap, but it can also kind of help maintain your handicap as well. A, a lot of golfers, I think, can get off the tee, can hit a decent enough second shot, but how frustrating is it from 30, 40, 50, 60 yards when you make a complete mess of it, you thin it over the back of the green, you catch it heavy, and the ball doesn't go, very far, doesn't go too far in front of you. So we need to be able to hit, I think, to get golfers better, 80 yards and in, we need to try and set ourselves a stand that we never miss the green. If you can do that, Regardless of the standard of golf you're at, you will actually you will definitely lower scores because we always make mistakes. But we're going to try and set a set a precedent that we never miss the green from inside of 80 yards. Once you feel like you've conquered that, then we just increase the parameters: 100, 110, 120. That's how we become better golfers. So the three things we're going to be looking at today with pitching and the three do's and don'ts that I see all too often. Number one: rotation. Golfers tend to freeze up. Such a short swing, such a short shot, 50 yards, you're looking and thinking, I could probably throw it there. Don't need too much power in this. So a lot of golfers we see start to kind of start moving like this. They suddenly start to stop to use the, the influence of the shoulders, the hips, the legs. Stop thinking about the actual, te the, um, the actual technique and just go up to the golf ball, swing it to there and then don't really get through the shot and realize you've either left it 20 yards short because of a good strike or you've hit it really poorly. Really, really important for short game, so for pitching in particular, is that we're still doing a small, we're doing a smaller version of our golf swing. So if my golf swing goes all the way up to there and round, I've got 45 degree hip turn, 90 degree shoulder turn approximately, with a pitch shot from 50, 60 yards, all I'm gonna do is gonna narrow my stance a little bit. So I would now use my club head width, like we did with chipping, two club head widths for chipping, maybe look at around about three for pitching. Because the swing's a bit longer, we need a bit more balance, a bit more stability, okay? So from that position, we've got three club head widths apart for the feet, weights ever so slightly on the left-hand side. I don't like to see it too much, ever so slightly on the left-hand side, but making sure, coming back to rule number one, is that we're rotating. So if I want to swing to nine o'clock swing, for example, where my left arm gets parallel to the ground, my feet, have, my legs have still moved, my hips have still rotated, my rib cage, my stomach, my shoulders, they're all still very much involved in the swing. So I can get into a decent position and I've got so much more control of my impact. I've got so much more control of my distance control and I've got control of strike. Rule number two kind of follows on quite nicely from rule number one and that's follow through. Again, we see, I see a lot of golfers will swing all the way back to here and generally stop in and around here on the way through because they're worried on the through swing that they're going to hit the ball too far. My through swing is not going to make a difference to how far my ball goes. It's going to help me maintain my momentum through impact. If I stop, if I swing back to here and stop there, to stop here, we must have slowed down here. So it comes back onto chipping with the deceleration, but there's gonna be an element of deceleration if we don't fully follow through. I could swing to there and follow through all the way around to here and the ball is not gonna to go too far. It's gonna go as far as what that backswing tells the ball to go. Your through swing, I always think, try and think of it as your momentum. So if you go to there and swing all the way through there, my ball's not suddenly traveled 150 yards, it's traveled the yardage that the backswing has told it to travel. Okay, so the, the, a key thing here is kind of putting some of the chipping fundamentals from yesterday and rule number one from today is making sure that we maintain speed and we maintain that, that symmetry between backswing and downswing. So for example, if I swing, to, if I swing back to nine o'clock, I wanna make, I've got my hips rotating from rule number one, I've got my upper body rotating. So nine o'clock with rotation and then through, into, through impact. 
probably hit the ball there around about 40 to 50 yards. I've come through to what feels like around about three o'clock, probably a little bit more, but my upper, my upper body and lower body now fully facing the target. I've added full rotation through the shot. I've maintained momentum. I've maintained power. I still need power in the shot to hit the ball 50 yards, but I've also maintained the ability to strike the ball consistently. If we can do that, we can also judge our distance control so much better. Rule number three, and at the same time, it's also probably rule number one, because it is the most important part of a golf swing, whether you're chipping it five yards or ripping that driver as far as you possibly can. Impact. Every golfer on tour has got a different golf swing. They've got different techniques. They've got different setups. One thing they all have in common is impact position. Okay, and we need to be into a position where we can create a good, powerful, efficient, consistent, and reliable impact position. So like every other shot, even though it's only 50 yards, we're not trying to get under the ball, we're not trying to help it with height or anything like that. We need to be in a position where the lower body's rotated, it's cleared through impact. We don't wanna be staying kind of static. If my lower body stays static, then my hands release the club early. That's called an early extension. That's something we're definitely we're trying to stay away from. What we've got to try and do from this point is as we're coming back down, make sure the hands are staying ahead of the club head and make sure the lower body's rotating. This is something where I want to try and see most golfers in. I want to see the lower body clear to the left. I want to see the hands slightly ahead of the golf ball. My shoulders are also left of the golf ball. So the very last thing that hits the ball is the club head. Every other part of my body's cleared. It's so really important, or even on such a short shot, like we alluded to yesterday with chipping, even on such a short shot, we've got full control of this impact position. So we'll get there, and we get a good, strong impact position. I still want to hit this ball with power. I still want a strong rotation through impact. Just because the ball's only going 50 yards, it doesn't mean everything stops. Everything gets kind of flicky and, stop and stops moving. Through impact here, we still need plenty of power, lots of rotation lower body and upper body out towards the target. What's not going to make this ball travel too far is the length of backswing and the amount of loft on the club head. The ball's going to hit, the club's going to hit down on the ball. Ball's going to go up. It's got backspin. It's got loads of loft. But what we've done, we've hit it efficiently and we've hit it properly. It's exactly how we're going to be able to consistently manage our distance control. Guys, thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed these last two days of chipping and pitching do's and don'ts. If there's anything on there that I have mentioned about your, your swing in particular, please do comment below. I'd like to know which part of your game you've been struggling with, but also what you'd like to see going forwards as well. Any more tips that you'd like to see in particular? I've got lots, I've got a huge library coming towards coming to the channel now. So if there's anything that you would specifically like to see, please let me know. I'll add it to my list and it will be uploaded to the channel. Guys, thank you very much for watching from a very, very hot and sweaty Dubai. 52 degrees yeah as you can possibly tell i'm not sure what it looks like um, 52 degrees very hot so please do subscribe to the channel follow me on my social media platforms facebook instagram and twitter and for today thank you very much for watching see you soon